Fortunately today, science has given us two weapons to fight with. We can use toxoid to stimulate the body to manufacture its own antibodies. We call this active immunization, but the course takes time to be effective. Or, if we need urgent protection for a non-immune patient, we can use an antitoxin, which consists of preformed antibodies. These are injected directly into the system, giving immediate passive immunization. The present day antitoxin is an homologous, that is, human product, tetanus immunoglobulin TIG. Unlike the outdated ATS of equine or bovine origin, TIG is virtually reaction free and persists longer in the circulation for at least four weeks. But TIG still gives no lasting immunity. Today, TIG is readily available throughout Australia. A new technique introduced by the Australian Red Cross Blood Transfusion Services has made this possible. This technique, called plasmapheresis, enables special plasmas containing high antibody levels to be obtained more frequently from hyperimmune donors. There is no risk of anemia, as with each donation, the plasma is separated and the red cells return to the donor. The plasmas are automatically analyzed, then processed at Commonwealth Serum Laboratories for their particular antibodies. Tetanus immunoglobulin is obtained this way. TIG for emergency prophylaxis, giving passive immunity to non-immune patients with tetanus-prone wounds. Patients, that is, who do not have a known active immunity. There would, of course, be no need for passive immunization if the whole population were effectively actively immunized with tetanus toxoid, now known as tetanus vaccine adsorbed. Tetanus vaccine is the one preparation that stimulates the body to produce its own antitoxin. But a course of three spaced injections is essential to achieve long-term immunity, followed by booster doses at approximately 10 year intervals. Note that the initial injection of vaccine does not give protective immunity. It merely primes the body's immunological mechanism. It's the remaining two doses of the course that eventually build up sufficient circulating antitoxin for effective immunity. Now the pattern of antibody response is quite interesting and fundamental to optimum dosage recommendations. Now here's what happens either side of the minimum protective level. First dose or priming dose. The patient is not immune. Second dose, six to 12 weeks later. The circulating antibodies build up beyond the minimum protective level, but steadily fall off to a non-protective level in about 12 months. The patient thus has only temporary protection. Six to 12 weeks is the optimum time, but the second dose will cause the same response if given several months or even years after the priming dose. The third dose of the course is given six to 12 months after the second. The antibody teeters build up well above the minimum protective level with a very gradual rate of fall off. Six to 12 months after the second dose is the optimum interval, but this third dose may be given up to 10 years later with the same response. The importance of correct follow-up after the first or priming dose becomes obvious. After a full course, protective immunity will persist for many years perhaps even for life in some individuals. And finally, a booster dose of vaccine every 10 years or so will sustain lifetime immunity. Now what happens if a booster dose is given as late as 
15 to 20 years after the initial course. Well, even if the circulating antibody count has fallen below the minimum protective level, the response is still likely to be prompt and vigorous. Always provided the original basic three-dose course has been completed. However, as we'll see later, not all sources of tetanus infection are identifiable. Therefore, regular 10-yearly boosting of immunity after the initial course provides the only safe long-term protection. Ideally, of course, active immunization against tetanus should start in childhood. Tetanus toxoid being one of the agents in triple antigen. This may be given from as early as two months of age. Or with CDT vaccine, up to eight years of age. And boosted thereafter, either with tetanus vaccine alone or with ADT vaccine. Now, ADT is recommended for simultaneous tetanus diphtheria boosting because it's been found that many adults in Australia don't have protective antibody levels against diphtheria. ADT contains a low concentration of diphtheria antigen and can safely be given to adults. Now, the question is often asked, what reactions can we expect from a dose of tetanus vaccine? For the answer, we go to the outpatients department of Sydney Hospital. Serious systemic reactions are rare. Reactions, when they do occur, are usually local in character. A diffuse edema with induration and erythema, pruritus, and sometimes varying degrees of pain or tenderness at the site of injection. However, these local reactions are never dangerous and normally disappear within a few days. They are usually indicative of a high level of immunity and are most commonly seen in persons who have been over-immunized.